Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you a DIY with these adorable wood crafter square owl plaques. I love owls. Can you tell? Yep, those owls I got at Michael's two years ago and I just saw them out again. So if you like these owls, you can find them at Michael's. They come out every fall and harvest season, I guess, at Michael's. And it's the only place I've ever seen them. And every time I've seen them, they've been about 50% off. And so I'm waiting for some new ones to come out and I might add another one to my collection because my mom loved owls and I love them now too. And so I grab them, I put them out because it reminds me of her. This is the first time that I have seen that Dollar Tree is carrying these wood plaques in the owl decor style for the fall and harvest season. And I love them. I couldn't wait to grab a couple and show you just how cute and easy it is to DIY these and turn them into something so stinking cute, I can hardly stand it. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get to DIYing this wood owl plaque. Before I get started with today's DIY, I wanted to give a quick shout out to probably one of my youngest viewers, and that goes out to Carson in Oklahoma. Hello, sweet Carson. Thank you so much for watching. I gotta tell you, my heart is melting because of you. Alrighty, so getting started with today's DIY, like I said, you can find these wood owl plaques by Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree right now. Or in my case, I can't find any more but the two that I have. To decorate this, I will be using this adorable orange and white gingham fat quarter that I found at Walmart by Create It. It was about $1.49. I'm gonna start off by taking some Mod Podge and on not the elevated areas, but the lower areas of this plaque, I'm gonna place some Mod Podge because those are the areas that I will be placing the fabric. So in order to place the fabric, you wanna put one good solid coating of Mod Podge on your plaque. Then I'm just gonna place my fabric down on the areas that I placed the first coating of Mod Podge. I'm gonna do this in sections because it's easier to remove the fabric if it's in sections versus placing it down in one solid piece and you're gonna get better coverage because there's not gonna be that tension on the fabric. And so it's easier if you just kind of use strips and you kind of cut them in areas that are gonna be inconspicuous to you cutting it. Once you've got your fabric placed, you're gonna wanna place a second coat of Mod Podge on top of the fabric. And again, you're really gonna wanna be generous with the Mod Podge because you really want this fabric to adhere to the plaque. And it's gonna cause the fabric to harden, which is gonna make it easier to cut. Once you've got that second coat of Mod Podge down, if you just go in with something that has a nice hard edge, I'm using these tweezers that you can get at the Dollar Tree by Toolbench. It comes in a four pack and you just kind of run it along the edges of the plaque that are elevated. You're gonna get nice, good, clean coverage of your fabric. You can see on this first piece of fabric how flat it is and how clean those edges are right around the owl's eyes. It's gonna make it a lot easier to cut and remove the fabric and you're gonna get a nice clean cut. For the second half, the bottom half, I should say, of this owl, I'm gonna repeat the same process that I did on the top. I'm gonna apply a nice generous coat of Mod Podge, place my fabric, really smooth out that fabric, get it pressed up against those edges nicely and apply a nice generous second coat of Mod Podge on top of the fabric. I do wanna say that when you are placing fabric on a wood plaque like this, that you really wanna be sure and not get the Mod Podge on any of the areas of the plaque that you 
are gonna wanna remove the fabric, being the eyes, the nose, and the wings, because if you do get Mod Podge on there and the fabric adheres to it, when you go to pull the fabric off of the plaque, it will take a layer of that wood off of the plaque and somewhat ruin the plaque and so you really just want to stick to putting the Mod Podge on the areas that you want to put the fabric and try to keep it off those other areas as much as possible. And again you're just going to want to go in with something like these tweezers and press that fabric up against all those elevated edges so you get those nice clean edges and you get the full coverage of your plaque in those areas that you want the fabric. Once I'm done doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and place this outside to dry. It's still well over 100 degrees where I live so this is gonna help speed up the drying process of the Mod Podge. Now that the plaque is good and dry, it is time to remove all of the excess fabric. And to do that, I suggest using either a straight edge razor or an X-Acto knife with a nice, fresh, sharp blade. So you get nice, clean cuts along the edges and it just cuts through that fabric a lot easier. Because the fabric has Mod Podge on it, like I said, it hardens and it makes it easier to cut through. The areas of the fabric that don't have the Mod Podge on it, you'll see that it is a bit harder to cut through with your X-Acto knife or razor. I'm gonna start off on the back side and cut away the fabric on those back, the outside edges, I guess I should say, using the plaque as a guide because it's gonna make it a lot easier to remove the fabric on the front side once a lot of the excess, the majority of the fabric has been taken away. Once we've got the majority of the fabric removed along that back side, we're gonna flip it over to the front side and using those elevated areas of the plaque as a guide, you're just gonna run your razor or your X-Acto knife right along those edges and it's pretty easy to do because again, we took those tweezers and we really made sure to press the fabric up in against those elevated areas so we could get a nice clean cut. I know I sound like a broken record, but this is already looking stinking cute with this fabric. You can really get creative and make it your own by just switching up the fabric. It's a bit harder to use paper on plaques like this because you're kind of molding the fabric to the plaque itself and paper's a bit harder. It's not as pliable, I'd say, as fabric is. To decorate the eyes and the wings, I'm going to be using some black puffy paint and some brown acrylic paint because I want a very deep, dark brown for this owl. Again, this is your DIY, so take what you like, leave what you don't, and make it your own, get creative. I'm an earth tones person and so these browns I think are going to go real nice with the fabric and I wanted a deep dark brown and so I can achieve that by using a black puffy paint and some brown acrylic paint to achieve the brown that I like and still get that puffy paint effect. The areas that I'm going to apply this deep dark brown puffy paint to are the owl's feet, the wings, the inside of the eyes, the nose, and the two points at the top, which would be, I guess, the owl's ears. The only sections that aren't gonna be painted are the rings around the owl's eyes because I'm gonna do those a different color because owls typically have that cream or white ring around their eyes, and so that's what I'm gonna do for this owl. Some of you may ask, why did you apply the fabric to the owl's feet if you're just gonna cover it up? And the reason behind that is just because it's easier to apply the fabric to that whole unelevated flat area of the plaque versus trying to cut sections away. I do also wanna point out that when applying puffy paint, you don't want to paint it on like you would paint on an acrylic paint, an oil paint. You want texture, you want dimension. And so to achieve that with the puffy paint, you just kind of need to dab it on. You need to be generous with the amount that you apply because the outcome is going to be that much better. Once I got the brown applied, I wasn't super happy with it. I felt like it was just too flat. It was too dark. It was missing something. 
and so I decided to go in with some gold puffy paint because I thought that maybe adding some gold shimmer to the brown would be a real nice contrast with the orange fabric. Once I started off in the eyes, I thought, oh wow, I really kind of like the way this gold looks mixed in with the brown. I'm not sure if it's coming across real clearly in the video, but I really liked it and I initially was only going to do the eyes. And once I did the eyes, I really liked the way it looked and so I decided to go in and add gold to the rest of the brown areas on the owl. And because puffy paint takes forever to dry, it was still wet so I didn't need to apply a second coat. I just added it to the paint that was already existing on the plaque itself. And for those rings around this cute little owl's eyes, I will be using some cream acrylic paint. This is just one by Folk Art that I had in my stash. And to get that puffy paint feel and look, I'm going to add some more of the gold that I added to the brown. And I'm going to be generous with this because I want the eyes to look the same as the other areas that I put the brown puffy paint on. And so to do that, like I said, you can just add puppy paint to any acrylic paint and it's going to have the same amazing outcome. I am loving the way this owl looks so far, but there are edges around the eyes and the wings that I'm not super happy with. And so to fix that, I figured I'd go in with the gold puffy paint and just outline some of the edges. And I feel like, honestly, this gives it a more finished look. I think it kind of defines the areas of the owl a bit more. And so I'm glad that I had a little mishap because sometimes when you have a little mishap and things don't always turn out, as clean or as nice as you want them to when you go to fix it you end up with a better result in the end anyway and by outlining this owl in the gold i was super happy with how it turned out in the end This week, Kayla has uploaded a time-lapsed video of her doing a pencil drawing freehand. It is amazing to actually watch her go through the process from the beginning into the end. She is very talented when it comes to art, drawing, and painting. So if you're interested in watching this time-lapse video, you can find the link to this video in the description box below. Now how stinking cute is this? What can you do with it? You can put a hanger on the back of it, hang it on your wall. You can put some kind of a stand on the back of it, maybe from a picture frame, and you can put it on a wood shelf. You can make a garland out of it. That is something that I've done using the wood bunnies. There are endless possibilities when doing these. I was only able to find two of them, and so I didn't go all out and make a garland like I usually do, but let me tell you, I am most definitely keeping my eye open for more of these at the Dollar Tree, and if I spot them, I'm gonna grab a couple more because I really do wanna make a garland out of them, and that really is why I didn't do anything else with this one today, because if I'm lucky enough just to find at least two or three more, I am definitely gonna make an owl garland like my bunny one, and I think it'll be super cute to hang up in the background of my videos. I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY of me showing you just how easy it is to craft these wood plaques that the Dollar Tree carries for every season and every holiday. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most importantly, Stay positive.